Welcome to St. Timothy Lutheran Church in Tarpon Springs, Florida. During this pandemic time, it, we are always the church, and we all long to be together and worship uh, the way that we were accustomed to, but God is faithful, and he is always with us. And so may we uh, renew our hearts in knowing that God is with us in this wilderness. He will walk with us. We are a congregation that deeply values daily Bible reading. I encourage you to stay in the scriptures as a way to hear and understand and know God's character and God's heart and continue to pray about everything. We uh, teaches us to trust God's wisdom rather than our understanding. So, dear people of God, pray about everything. Stay in the scriptures. If you need resources, please contact us here at the church. Um, we are a church that is deeply relational. We believe that our God is a God of relationships and that we uh, are a people that are heavily dependent on each other. And so uh, we thank you for everyone who participated in our prayer partners. Uh, we will be sending out everyone uh, your new prayer partners this week, so watch your email. We are still in need of more people to help reach out to others in prayer to check in on them. Participants will be assigned three to five members of our congregation to reach out by phone, text, email, or written note to let them know that you're praying for them. Then commit to intentionally pray for those people all month. At the end of the month, you will receive another three to five names to reach out to. It is a way for us to continue to be united in prayer as a St. Timothy family, making sure that we are reaching everyone. If you'd like to participate, please email Mary Dellison at discipleship at mylutheran.com. Discipleship at mylutheran.com. Or you can call the office uh, to get in touch with Mary. Also, our cross trainers, our youth group, uh, fifth through twelfth grades, they will meet this week. As we all prepare for the beginning of the school year, we want to bring everyone together to check in, to see each other's faces, albeit remotely, and to have time to share together in conversation and prayer and perhaps some silliness too. All our cross trainers, youth, uh, fifth grade through high school, are invited to join us this Sunday, uh, August 23rd from 5 to 6 p.m. Um, the meeting ID and this is the same meeting number as our St. Timothy Bible studies. Please contact Mary for the link. We hope that you can all make it. Our St. Timothy Bible studies are continuing to grow. It's a blessing to be together and to grow in relationship with Christ as well as with one another. And all are welcome to join us when you can. Uh, we have two different Bible studies that meet from 1 to 2 p.m. on Tuesdays and 7 to 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. We also have a centering prayer group that meets 5.30 to 6.30 on Thursdays. Everyone is welcome. If you have any questions or would like the meeting code, our directions on how to join our Zoom, please send Mary Dellison an email again at discipleship at mylutheran.com. And also, uh, besides the worship that we have for Sunday, which you're at right now, um, we also have a midweek contemplative service, too, which is on our website. Just check that out on the front page. Uh, it's a great way to center yourself in this time of anxiety. Uh, please continue to send your prayer requests and praise reports to the office so that we can raise them up in prayer together. You can submit them to Natalie in the office or through Gay Fernandes, our prayer chain coordinator. And just a reminder to continue your weekly offering. You can mail your envelope to the church. Use Give Plus or our online giving link, which is on the front page of the website or on the Give Plus app, which is also available to download for your phone. You can also use bill pay through your own bank or drop your offering off at the church office. Please call first before coming to confirm office hours. That said, let us focus our hearts now on our relationship with Jesus Christ as we begin the worship of our Lord through our prelude. Oh 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. I invite you to humbly kneel before our God and to make confession in your heart. That is to repent and turn your heart and life back to God's heart and life. If you cannot kneel, you may certainly stand or sit. Reconciling God, we, we confess, confess that, that we do not, not trust, trust your abundance, your abundance. And, and we, we deny your, your presence in our, in our lives. lives. We, we place our hopes in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We, we sin in thought, word, word and deed. deed. By, By your grace, grace forgive, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. us. And in your spirit, lead us. us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom you have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are one body, all one people, all a many. We are all one in Christ, we are one body, all one people. Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. join our hearts and voices together in the prayer of the day. O oh God, God, with all your faithful, faithful followers of every, every age, we, we praise, praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that, that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 51, verses 1 through 6. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. 
Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. Here ends the first reading. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We will now sing responsibly Psalm 138. The second reading is Romans chapter 12, beginning with the first verse. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver 
in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. 
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. It's amazing how politicized anything can become these days. Who would have figured a virus would be so political? We are at each other's throats over our opinion on this or that issue that seems to bring out the beast in us, dividing us into our isolated caves of being right. Psalm 138 today starts in verse 1. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. What are other gods for us? Little g gods. That which we put our ultimate trust in, that which we worship. Maybe we don't think about it that way, but often it's ourselves. Financial security, our physical well-being, sports and entertainment, our knowledge, our possessions, our comfort, our rights, our political alliances can be gods we give our greatest allegiance to. In today's gospel, Jesus and the disciples stood near a grotto where the god Pan was worshipped, located prominently in Caesarea Philippi. On the cliff walls adjacent to the grotto were any number of niches holding images of other gods. In this place, where many gods are worshipped, Jesus asked the disciples, But who do you say that I am? Besides identity, the question is about allegiance. As much as we'd like to have the right answer with Peter today, maybe in our daily life we are more like the crowds. You know, the people who say Jesus is like John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Certainly people to look up to. Oh, not that we don't confess Jesus as Lord and worship, but I've seen non-believers mouth the words to fit in. But if actions speak louder than words, and we know that they do, then it raises the question, do our actions confess that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God for us? In our daily living, is it really fueled by our belief in the resurrection, that love is stronger than our mistakes, and that life, not death, is the final reality? Or do our actions testify that he is a great man, an example to follow, someone to be inspired by, kind of like, you know, the prophets of old? Is there a disconnect between our public confession and our everyday actions? It's not that we're intentionally trying to live apart from our confession of Christ. It's just that it's so easy to conform to the world. It's our sinful nature to serve ourselves, our own interests. In our hearts, I suspect, most of us would like the words we say on Sunday, not just to align with the rest of our lives, but actually to matter day in and day out. So there's this foundational, personal question that comes alive every time we hear it. Who do you say that Jesus is? Who do you say that Jesus is when no one's looking? In the secret recesses of our hearts. Understand, this isn't about guilt and shame. Oh, I'll do better. We're all too aware of our brokenness inside and around us, but it's about having us reflect on what we actually mean when we say with Peter that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. It's about the discipline of God's church to be even more aware of God's grace and the power of the resurrection than the power of the world around us. All too often, it's convenient for us to leave Jesus at church or back in the scriptures where I can pull him out when I need him. To keep the wild, unpredictable God of love at a distance from us. And Jesus remains inspiring and a good example, but rather tame and safe. Kind of like the historical dead prophets of old. Rather than letting the mystery of his constant presence rule our life. If we believe that God proclaims in the resurrection that he is alive. Then surprise, Jesus stepped right out of history into today. Alive and loose in the world and in our lives right here. We are challenged by Jesus' question today to invite the Holy Spirit to empower us each day. To let our confession of the resurrected Jesus, Son of the living God, shape our lives. We need to yield each day to the Holy Spirit because that is easier said than done. Think of all the things we had to have in our lives. And when you look around your place... We just don't use anymore. It was said that during this time of pandemic that some of the drop-offs for 
um, the Shepherd Center and other places has really grown because folks look around at all the things they don't need that have been cluttering their space. It's virtually impossible to escape advertising. The marketing media industry spends billions of dollars annually to tell us who we should be to conform to the world's ever-changing standards. It seems like just when you get there, it all changes. In all the groups we find ourselves in, the pressure to fit in is great, telling us what we're supposed to be and value. It puts the focus on you, and that can translate into church life, too. Instead of being thankful to God, American Christians often risk worshiping God's blessings instead of worshiping God. Paul asks us, Today in the book of Romans, where is God in your living? In other words, who do you say that Jesus is to you? Today in Romans, Paul tells us our Christian identity is something so far beyond our political alliances and systems. Writing to the Christian communities under the Roman Empire, he urges them not to live according to the political ideologies of Rome, but rather to live out of faith on the basis of what God did in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our values and viewpoints are not modeled by the time in which we live, but are transformed by the Holy Spirit's renewing work. In response to the free gift of salvation, Paul casts a vision in Romans of how Christian community is different from the world. Christian living is humble giving. Humble servanthood. It's more communal than it is individual. Kind of the reverse of what we hear in our culture. We belong to one another like parts of the same body, Paul tells us. We each contribute our gifts to the work of God through us. For the building up of Christ's purpose among us. Instead of pride, there is faith, humility, encouragement, generosity, hard work. And good humor. In Romans, Paul pleads with us don't be conformed to this world, this age, this current culture. Paul recognizes the pressure to conform to different cultural values. In those days, Jewish Christians insisting that Gentile Christians conform to their cultural practices. Roman culture puts its demands on the early Christians to conform or die. Paul goes on, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. We get the word metanoia, repentance, a change of mind, a 180 back to God. Proverbs 23, 7 tells us, as a person thinks, so they are. It's as if Paul is saying to us, don't be conformed to this age, but be transformed by focusing on the age to come. Why? So that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect living right now today. The will of God. We get a glimpse in Isaiah 51. The will of God is to save us from brokenness and death and restore the paradise of Eden for us. He says in Isaiah 51... I will bring my deliverance swiftly. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. And those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever. And my deliverance will never be ended. Isaiah encourages people who are in exile. Hard, broken lives, far from home. He says to them, remember where you came from. God showed his faithfulness and steadfast love to Abraham and Sarah. And as we hear in verse 2, the one blessed believer has now become many. God made a promise to them, and they had a hard time waiting and trusting, as we do. But God fulfilled the promise. So trust God to keep his promise for the future in your life. No matter what exile or pandemic you find yourself in, it is as if the prophet is saying, may God's past revelation help us to trust in God's future salvation. Stay the course. It helps to know, even though Peter gets the right answer, he doesn't know what's going on. God gives him the answer. He can't boast. And just like us, Peter will make his share of mistakes. But God works through him for God's glory, as he does with us as well. Jesus is God's revelation and our future salvation. The fulfillment of God's past, present, and future promises. 
So God's question for all of us every day is, who am I to you? Who am I to you today? To answer this question is risky and will direct who we will become. If you believe in something, you know you act on it. If you eat the dinner that was prepared for you, you trust that there's no poison in it and that they did a good job. Uh, If you're going to sit in a chair, you trust that that chair won't break under you. When you get married, you have trust that this will work. Who do you really say that Jesus is? Not just in worship or the creed, but also with your relationships, your bank account, your time, your energy, and all the rest. When you share life with dear loved ones, being around them a couple of times a year or even once a week for a whole hour and a half wouldn't be the same as living with them in daily commitment. Oh, sure, you'd see them in all their warts and scars. In that daily contact, we get to know each other without makeup, intentionally offering ourselves to the other as imperfectly as we do that, seasoned with a whole lot of forgiveness along the way. Worship is not just jumping through the hoop, dropping off my offering, but living in our faith in Jesus Christ 24-7. It's about a relationship where he sees all our warts and our scars and all that we are, but wants to be with us every day so that we can grow in that relationship in a mutual, reciprocal way. Paul says to people who are used to sacrificing their wealth in the form of a dead animal to make things right with God, he says, listen, God alone has made you right through the cross of Christ. And now that you're included in God's future salvation as a pure gift of grace, present yourselves as living sacrifices, as your spiritual worship to God. Give yourself, not to sin, that is to our self-serving desires, but to God as living sacrifices, with a mind fixed not on your will, which Paul would call the flesh, but on God's will, which he would call the spirit, in order to discern what kind of deeds are pleasing to God. And not the culture around us. Offering ourselves to God as living sacrifices. He tells us this is true worship. And if we give an offering away. It's no longer ours is it? It's theirs. Which in this case with God is good news. Because God is a much better manager than we are. Martin Luther used to say. What I put in my hands I usually lose. But what I put in God's hands is mine forever. Jesus' question is not just a matter of definition, but of formation. Not just doctrine, but discipleship. That is not just teaching, but actually learning and growing in relationship. It's not just a part of life. It's to be a way of life, Torah. I don't think Jesus asks us to confess who we believe he is for his sake, but rather for ours. So that we won't be consumed by a deathly broken world that seems to overwhelm us and consume us, but that we might be transformed by his promise and presence to live in hope of his future salvation right now amidst this pandemic and all the struggles that we're in. May the Holy Spirit come and turn our hearts and minds to God's promise of forgiveness and salvation today so that our lives might truly confess that Jesus is the son of the living God to the praise of the Father. And may the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 Make it count, leave a mark, build a name for yourself. Dream your dreams, chase your heart above all else. Make a name the world remembers But all an empty world can sell is empty dreams I got lost in the lie, it was all up to me To make a name the world remembers Jesus is the only name to remember
Let us now reconfirm our faith and join together in the saying of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and in the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, our rock, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ, your Son, whom we confess as the living God. Prepare your church for its mission in bearing witness to Christ, both here at home and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We call forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our songs to theirs that a spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish this wondrous home you give us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of countries, legislators, magistrators, mayors, and counsels to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need with mercy and fulfill your loving purposes in the governance of people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us, deliver us, and fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and wholeness to those who are bereaved, in trouble, or adversity, or sick, or in need of care. Especially we hold before you those on our prayer list, those in the deep sanctuary of our hearts. We pray for those who have been affected by the derecho and the Midwest for those affected by the California wildfires, for the unrest in Belarus, for the US and the unrest here and the rest of the world, we ask for your healing. For those affected by Hurricane Isaias, 
for Nick Zaluski, his family and friends. He's in his final stages of stage four lymphoma and under hospice care. For Al Kazi's continued recovery, for Ann Cubley's continued recovery and Barbara Snare, for Dorothy Katz, for Tom Trask, who was deployed to Afghanistan, for Lori Zakruski, continued recovery, for Pam Brown, recovering from surgery on August 20th, for Sharon Anderson and her upcoming surgery on August 26th, for Simone to find a job, for all those who are going back to school, for those who are unemployed, newly homeless, and the food insecure. For these and for others, Lord, we place them into your care, knowing that you are faithful. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. You call us into this community of St. Timothy, in which we, though many, are one in Christ. May we recognize in ourselves and in one another the unique gifts you have given us for the building up of the church for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we thank you so very much for all the many blessings that you spill into our lives. Please help us to recognize, celebrate, and share those as a sign of our hope in your coming kingdom and our trust that you will provide everything that we need. We thank you for the birthdays of Chip Snare, Joanne Butcher, Lisa Thompson. We thank you so very much for all teachers, administrators, and all those who work in our schools, for first responders and doctors and nurses and scientists. We thank you for Trevor Thompson's naval promotion. For these and for other thanksgivings, we hold them before you in celebration. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the everlasting rock from which we were hewn, and you restore your people to joy and gladness. In blessed memory and hope, we thank you for the lives of our beloved dead. Bring us with them to our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Normally at this time of year, we would have the backpack blessings, and we're going to be doing that through our Zoom uh, with our youth group, also things that we're sending out to folks, but uh, we also want to take a time to just pray for all of our teachers and administrators and families, parents, youth that are going back. Um, we know that there's much to be concerned about, and so we want to pray God's blessings. I would ask right now that we would metaphorically hold up our hands and pray for our people that are on the staff at the schools, for parents at this time who teach every day in the home. Let's take a moment and pray for them. Lord God, our teacher, because you have given us the gift of reason, memory, and imagination, forgive us, Lord, when we grow weary in the honored call of teaching for you. Help us cherish the gifts that you have given us and the gift of your word that you have entrusted us to teach. Bless our teachers who stimulate thinking. Help us to experience your great story and inspire the sharing of their gifts. Strengthen our teachers and school staffs with joyous zeal for their task and the service that is pleasing to you. And in this unprecedented time, Lord, protect our staff at schools and their families. Help us to experience in all teaching Jesus Christ at the center, the history of God's salvation, the beauty of God's creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your Son. Amen. Amen. So now we ask um, that we would have children front and center if you're at home or someplace, or just hold them up in your heart at this time as we ask for blessing and protection on our children. Dear Lord Jesus, You've asked us to grow in our faith through worship and service, Bible reading and learning. May this church year, school year, provide children with opportunities to grow in your love through the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your lambs and those who feed them. Help both teachers and students to grow in knowledge of the Heavenly Father, in their likeness to Christ, in repentance for sin, in trust in your mercy, and the fruits of the Spirit. 
Forgive the times they fail to learn when they're lazy. Grant them vision, understanding, and progress in your grace. Make each Sunday school session, each day at school, an opportunity to grow in the life that is pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 And let us now pray as our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My life and my lady, consecrated Lord to me. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless ways. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of my love. Take my feet and let them be such a beautiful for thee. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless ways. Take my silver and my gold, not a my good I would hold. Take my insolence and use every power. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. And thanks, thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.